Resolved, animals should not be used to test beauty or other products that are not medically necessary. Hello, my name is Raquel Justice and I am speaking for the affirmative. The status quo is no longer working. More than 100 million animals a year are being forced to live an isolated life full of indescribable pain. Mice, primates, cats, dogs, and rabbits are only a handful of the countless species of animals that scientists across America are subjecting to cruel and inhumane testing. According to the Humane Society of America, there are multiple forms of testing that the animals may be subject to, such as eye irritation, skin irritation, or oral and dermal toxicity tests, which determines the amount of a substance that causes half of the test subjects to die within 14 days of exposure. That is just a fraction of what these poor creatures have to endure on a daily basis. That is a problem. We should not be testing on animals when there are cheaper and more humane methods available, as my partner will share with you. People often use the argument that animals are similar to humans and will provide accurate test results to justify killing them. That could not be farther from the truth. The gap between humans and animals is too vast to get a truly accurate test result. A recent study conducted by Cruelty Free International found that out of 93 dangerous side effects, only 19% could have been predicted through animal testing. They also found out that drugs that have promising results in animal tests, 90% failed when tested on humans. This is not the only study that has found this conclusion. A professor from the University of Cambridge found the same fallacy saying, the unreliability of animal experimentation across a, ride, a wider range of areas undermines scientific arguments in favor of the practice. The lives of these animals typically consist of being locked in an undersized cage in a room with no windows and constant fear of their next procedure. Most of these animals never get to see sunlight or breathe fresh air. The loneliness alone drives, them, drives the animals to the brink. According to PETA, a nonprofit organization, insanity, circling cages, rocking back and forth, and, pull it, and even pulling out their own fur have been known to occur. Once these animals are taken into testing, they rarely get out. And even if they are one of the lucky ones, what life can they have? The side effects of testing may be blindness, maiming, brain damage, the st and stress psychosis. If an animal has any of these, they cannot live a life as they were intended to in the wild. But there is a solution. Research has found alternatives that are more reliable, cheaper, and don't require painful testing on helpless animals, such as computer models and simulations or human cell and tissue culture tests. These methods are proven to be more reliable and humane. This change will save millions of animals' lives, the government money, and provide a consumer with a better, safer product. The status quo has to change. It is juvenile to think that animals are similar to humans. They are not and will never be. Therefore, it is wrong to try and use this to justify their murder. They want to live and be free just like we do, and, take that, and to take that from them when they cannot fight back is wrong and needs to stop. We as a people should protect those who cannot protect themselves. If you have a pet, have ever had a pet, or have ever wanted one, think of them. Would you, put, would you give them this life? Would you force them to live a life without sunshine or fresh air, full of excruciating pain and constant fear? That is why we need to change the status quo and save lives. Resolved. Animals should not be used to test beauty or other products that are not medically necessary. I am Jonathan Hanson, and I'm speaking for the negative. My esteemed opponents have suggested that the status quo is in need of change. However, the status quo works best. An important aspect to note is that the testing of products on animals aids in safety and health of humans. In 2015, on October 30th, an article was published by The Guardian. It states that on average, women apply around 168 different chemicals to their bodies a day. If these products had not been tested beforehand, there's no telling what would happen. Drugs in particular can carry significant dangers with their use, but animal testing allows researchers to measure the safety of drugs prior to commencing trials on humans. Human harm is reduced and lives are saved. Furthermore, submitted research by Procon.org on November 2nd, 2017 suggests, or er, says, animals genetically are so alike with humans that chimpanzees are 99% and mice are 98% genetically similar to humans. Mammals even have the same set of organs, such as heart, kidneys, lungs, and more, that, that function in essentially the same way with the help of a bloodstream and central nervous system. Because animals and humans are so biologically similar, they're susceptible to the same illnesses and disorders, such as cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. 
Another logical re reason for animal testing is that animals themselves benefit from the experiments. The same document expresses rabbit, er, rabies, distemper, feline leukemia, infectious hepatitis virus, tetanus, anthrax, and canine parvovirus could have taken the lives of millions of animals if vaccines were not tested. These treatments were developed during animal testing, um, and some of these include pacemakers for heart disease and remedies for glaucoma and hip dysplasia. Animal testing has also been instrumental in saving endangered species from extinction, including the black-footed ferret, the California condor, and the tamarins of Brazil. Also, an epidemic has ravaged koalas, and now in some regions of Australia, uh, koalas are classified as endangered. New chlamydia vaccines that were discovered in the process of animal testing s slows the rate of infection and treats early stages of the disease. Think about it. Do you really want these poor animals to suffer in the future from... Do you want these poor animals in the future to suffer from these undocumented diseases? If you don't want these animals to suffer, the best time to vote for the status quo is now. And for reassuring purposes, even the American Veterinary Medical Association endorses animal testing. And before I'm done, I would like to address that if animal testing was illegal or punishable, animal testing would become, become a lot less popular method, even for medical tactics, which in turn would make some of these cases harder to cure. So in my conclusion, my partner and I urge you to keep the status quo the same. Resolved. Animals should not be used to test beauty or other products that are not medically necessary. My name is Gerardo Soto and I am arguing for the affirmative team. My partner has already talked about the problems that s the several problems that animal testing brings, but our plan can fix that, and my fellow opponents have tried to bring had tried to bring several points to disprove our argument, but we can tell you that these are not true. There are many alternatives that can be used instead of animal testing. There's been several different methods being produced to replace animal testing that proved to be more efficient and more cost effective than using animals. According to research done by the Humane Society of the United States, there has been more than 50 different testing methods being produced over the years. For instance, EpiSkin, EpiDerm, and SkinEthic that are each composed of artificial human skin can be a substitute to painful skin irritation and corrosion tests done to rabbits. Another method is bovine corneal opacity and permeability test, an isolated chicken eye test, that instead of using live animals, eyes from animals that were already slaughtered for the meat industry could be used for p to check for potential skin sens sensitization. In addition, to test the potential of medicines and other products that can cause sunlight induced phototoxicity the 3T3 neutral red uptake phototoxicity test can, can be used instead of rats and mice. These are just a few of the many alternatives that can be used. And throughout many cases, animal testing has also proven to be a cause of huge wastes of money. According to an article posted on the Daily Caller, stated that according to an um, analyst an analysis of government data, the National Institute of Health spends between 12 million and nearly 14.5 million on animal testing every year. And according to PETA.org, 92% of animal tests fail and half of the tests that do succeed end up failing in human trials. Billions of dollars are being wasted on animal testing that could be used for better things if we use other alternatives instead of animals. In conclusion, animal testing has several flaws and need to be stopped. We, the affirmative team, believes that our plan can fix these issues. Thank you. Resolved. Animals should not be used to test beauty products or other products that are not medically necessary. My name is Maddie Moorhead, and I'm for the negative team. While my worthy opponents have suggested that the current status quo should be changed, they are incorrect. Animal testing is a controversial topic. Unfortunately, this has led to a great deal of misinformation and biased articles on the subject. 
Consumers and manufacturers sometimes ask how the use of animals for testing cosmetics. According to FDA.gov, the Food and Drug Administration is responsible for assuring that cosmetics are safe and properly labeled. This is accomplished through the enforcement of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The FDA the FD&C Act does not specifically require the use of animals in testing cosmetics for safety, nor does the Act subject cosmetics to FDA pre-market approval. However, the agency has consistently advised marketing manufacturers to employ whatever testing is appropriate in effect for substantiating the safety of their products. It remains the responsibility of the manufacturer to substantiate substantiate the safety of both ingredients and finished cosmetic pro products prior to marketing. Animal, te animal testing by manufacturers seeking to market new products may be used to establish product safety. In some, in some cases, after considering available alternatives, companies may determine that animal testing is necessary to assure the safety of a product or ingredient. In all cases where animal testing is used, FDA advocates that research and testing derive the maximum amount of useful scientific information from the minimum number of animals and employ the most humane methods available within the limits of scientific capability. Some cosmetics and healthcare products must be tested on animals to ensure their safety. According to animaltesting.procon.com, American women use an average of 12 personal care products per day, so product safety is of great importance. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration endorses the use of animal tests on cosmetics to, to assure the safety of a product or ingredient. China requires that all cosmetic be tested on animals before they go on sale, so cosmetic companies must have their products tested on animals if they want distribution in China. The negative's plan is to keep the status quo the same, to continue conducting valuable research on animals when only necessary to, ultimately ensure the safety of humans. So my partner and I urge you to keep the status quo as it currently stands. While my worthy opponents have suggested that the status quo is, is, is in need of change, I believe that they are wrong. Um, 
as they stated that mice are not alike to humans, um, mice are in fact 98% genetically alike to humans, and uh, a research conducted by HSI.org states that mice are the most common animals to be tested on, which would provide the best evidence. Um, also, um, they did, they failed to state the dates on the articles, especially the expense ones. When was that from? Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Although my fellow opponents have suggested that animal testing can provide benefits for other animals, I suggest that animals don't even need to be tested in the first place with alternatives like like bovine corneal opacity or permanent test or the fish threshold method. Instead, we should um, stop animal testing all for all and use alternatives instead. Thank you. While my worthy opponents have suggested that the current status quo should be changed and have proven many points that it should be, some were not supported by evidence such as indescribable pain, um, they did not show sufficient evidence from studies and laboratories that the animals were in pain and in horrible habitats and are going crazy. And also another point, um, computer models um, will not give sufficient results. Um, they don't show accurate such accurate information such as al allergic reactions, um, like um, animals will. Um, um, yeah. My esteemed opponents mentioned that animal testing is necessary to keep the product safe for humans. That is incorrect. With, the with all of the alternatives that are provided for us with new research and technology that has just recently come out, we can safely, we can humanely test the same, we can humanely keep the same tests and have even better results while keeping the animals safe. And it's still safe for humans. Thank you.
Resolved. Teenagers under the age of 18 should be able to get tattoos. My name is Noah Bruce, and my debate partner Zoe Taylor and I are arguing for the affirmative side. The definition of tattoo, according to Collins Dictionary, is a design that is drawn on someone's skin using needles to make little holes and filling them with colored dye. There is a problem with the status quo that people have to be 18 or older to get tattoos in Washington. Instead, teens under 18 should be able to get tattoos with the parents' consent. There are many reasons why this law should change. One is that 18-year-olds are still teenagers and not completely mature. According to neuroscientist Sandra Amott, who is featured on NPR, people haven't reached full maturity until the age of 25, not 18. It is a false argument to say that people must wait until they are 18 to be mature enough to get a tattoo because people mature at different rates. The status quo should be changed so that if a teenager's parents feel like their teen is mature enough, they can give them their consent to get a tattoo. Also, it doesn't make sense that 16-year-olds can drive, but they can't get tattoos. In fact, in 2015, according to the CDC Injury Center, 2,333 teens in the U.S. ages 16 to 19 were killed in car crashes. If teens are granted the permission to drive cars, which are very deadly machines, it would make sense that they could get tattoos as well, which caused nobody else harm. Furthermore, according to Idaho Code 181523, it is illegal to get tattoos in Idaho for people 14 and up with the parent's consent. Since it is illegal to get tattoos from ages 17 and under in Washington, some Washingtonians cross the border into Idaho and get tattoos with the parent's consent. If underage people in Washington are still able to get tattoos just by crossing the border into Idaho, then there's no reason why the law should be, shouldn't be changed. Washington should follow in Idaho's footsteps and make the necessary change to the status quo. That way, parents can de decide if and when their teen is mature enough to get a tattoo. Thank you. Resolved, teens under the age of 18 should be allowed to get tattoos. Good afternoon, my name is Kai Sinnott and I am debating for the negative team. My worthy opponents, the affirmative team, have suggested that there is a problem with the status quo. However, this is not true. One reason that passing a law that allows teens to get tattoos will not work is, that the, fact, is the fact that the brains of teenagers are not fully developed yet. According to a study done by the University of Rochester, the brain of a human is not fully developed until age 25. The study also showed that the brain of a teenager and the brain of an adult work differently. Adults use the prefrontal cortex much more often than teens. This is the part of the brain that's the center for logical decision making. On the other hand, this is still developing in the brain of a teenager. Teens use the part of the brain associated with emotional decision making, how they're feeling on a certain day. If a teen gets a tattoo based on how they feel on a certain day, without proper planning, then how are we to say that they will not regret this tattoo the next day? And if not then, why not a year or two later? If teens are allowed to get tattoos before their brains are developed, before they, they, use to learn the use, they learn to use the logical part of their brain, then they may regret this tattoo later in life. In fact, in an interview conducted by Tiffany Yanetta, an anonymous source stated, I got this tattoo when I was 17, the artist did a bad job, and it was ill-planned, and, after 15 years, I'm sick of the tattoo. This shows some of the many consequences that teens must consider before getting a tattoo. However, teens will completely disregard this and go through with getting the tattoo anyway. This is one of the reasons that teens should not be allowed to get tattoos before age 18. My opponents may state that teens are responsible enough to make their own decisions, that they have the right to express themselves. However, Legally speaking, parents still have the authority to make binding decisions for their child until their child turns 18. Having a word or picture cut into one's body is a binding decision. In fact, according to Dr. Sarah Chamlin, a doctor who specializes in tattoo removal, most tattoos cannot be completely removed. In many cases, they are permanent. Parents will still have the right to decide if they would like to allow their teens to get a tattoo, regardless of any law passed. 
It is not the right of a teen to decide what they would like to do and not do, but a privilege gifted to them by their parents. Parents are not required to give their children this privilege. Therefore, we, the negative, maintain that our opponents, the affirmative team, have failed to show significant evidence that the status quo should be changed, or even that there is a problem with the status quo. The, the affirmative used a source from Idaho. We live in Washington. This debate is about Washington. This source is not rele relevant. Therefore, the negative team must request that the legal age for which teens can get a, uh, can get a tattoo must stay at 18. Thank you. Result. Teens under the age of 18 should be allowed to get tattoos. My name is Zoe Taylor, and I will be speaking for the affirmative side. As my por partner pointed out, there is an inherent problem with the status quo. As stated earlier, one's maturity doesn't define the readiness of being inked. Additionally, if tattoos are viewed as mature enough to operate a motor vehicle at the age of 16, but not mature enough to get a tattoo, this thinking is illogical. Cars can be a deadly machine, and tattoo is just ink on skin easily covered up with clothing. First off, tattoos is, are a form of fine art created by talented artists. People permanently get these colorful creations onto their skin to remember moments in their lives, express themselves, or commemorate a loved one. Smithsonian interviewed Charles Coco Bayron, a contemporary artist and tattoo artist. He remembers growing up and seeing tattoos on rebellious motorcycle gang members, but now he sees tattoos as people wearing their hearts on their sleeves and telling their stories through pictures and words. If young adults aren't allowed to get tattoos, they are being held back from fully expressing themselves. Tattoos are a creative and unique way for teens to show how they are feeling and symbolize the, their state of life. If done incorrectly, tattoos can be dangerous. We want our teens to be safe when making the decision to get a tattoo. The FDA states that one can get a serious infection from an unsafe needle at a shady tattoo parlor. Getting unsafe ink can result in rashes, red bumps, and a fever. Some severe side effects include shaking, sweats, and chills. WikiHow does have a full article informing teens how to get a tattoo behind their parents' backs. Clearly, this is a common thought. A California newspaper, Mercury News, reported that a 13-year-old, Gilbert Machea, got a tattoo done by a friend, not in a safe, clean, legal environment. He went behind his parents' backs and got a tattoo. This needs to end. The current status quo forces kids to be sneaky and unsafe. 16-year-olds should be able to get a tattoo. Teens will do whatever they want, no matter what adults say. But if the status quo is changed, teens will be able to find a safe, lawful, and reliable tattoo shop with their parents knowing that doesn't cause serious health issues. Tattoos have been around for a very long time. Tattooing is a part of many ethnicities and cultures. Take the Samoans for example. Tattoo Splendor states that men have these large tattoos from knees to the waist, and women have these tattoos from their knees to their upper thighs. This is a standard way to convey their culture. While the current tattooing age stands at 18, the teens who are Samoan are currently legally not allowed to get tattoos. They are allowed to express their culture in many other ways, but this is holding them back from expressing it to the maximum. This needs to be changed immediately. Officials are being insensitive and not taking these cultures into consideration. This rule has still not been changed and needs to be immediately. Therefore, the status quo is not working. The age to get tattoos should not be 18 and over. Two years does not define the readiness of getting inked. Two years does not define the maturity of a young adult. 18-year-olds are still teens, so two years should not be that big of a deal. Teens should have the right to do what they want with their bodies. Consequently, they should be able to get tattoos. Thank you. Resolved. Teens under the age of 18 should be allowed to get tattoos. Hello, my name is Lily Wiley, and I'm speaking for the negative team. My worthy opponents have stated that the status quo should be changed. But let's think about the side effects of this. First of all, if we allow young adults to get tattoos, how will we to be certain that they will not abuse this privilege and regret their decision later in life? According to the Seattle Times, it costs $50 per square inch to get a tattoo removed. Depending on the size, it could take up to 12 treatments to fully remove an average size tattoo. Other complications from tattoos include allergic reactions, skin infections, and blood-borne diseases. All of these side effects cause a trip to the doctor and possibly medical treatments, which cost money and time. 
This could cause medical bills and a permanent disfiguration on the child's body. The affirmative may argue that it's the teen's body and they can do what they want with it. However, teens may regret their decision later in their life ahead. It could affect their chances of getting jobs or starting businesses in their future. According to a 2017 study done by USA Today, 76% of businesses will less likely hire people with tattoos, and that 46% of businesses believe visible tattoos are inappropriate in the workplace. Also, businesses believe enormous or crude tattoos are a distraction from productivity. A tattoo may be a way of expressing oneself, but a business may think of them as a negative symbol for their company. When a teen has an impulse, they will typically act on it. They won't stop to think maybe it's not the best idea to have something permanent put on their body at such a young age. Teens may also succumb to peer pressure and think that if all their friends are getting a tattoo, they have to too. According to the Smithsonian, teachers, teenagers have a lack of experience in the world, and when they, have, when they discover something new, they act on their urges. Teens may also not stop to think about negative side effects to, to tattoos until it's too late. It is proven that it takes years for teens' brains to depict risky decisions from logical ones. So getting a tattoo while their brains are still developing is a major life change that will affect their lives for years to come. Given these points, teens should not be allowed to get tattoos until the age of 18. This is because they can cause health problems, give them a lesser chance of getting a job, and their brains are not fully developed, so they will not be able to fully understand how big of a mistake they have made until it's already done. Additionally, the affirmative team has not given significant evidence that the status quo should be changed. Thank you. Our respected opponents have stated that if 16-year-olds can drive, why can't they get tattoos? However, this is inaccurate because tattoos are still dangerous. So <laughs> we, the negative, concur that allowing teens to get tattoos will affect their futures and produce a negative outcome for their lives. Overall, the affirmative did not show strong enough evidence and provided little reasoning as to why teens should be able to get tattoos. Thank you. Our worthy opponents have stated that um, their brains aren't, 16-year-olds' um, brains aren't fully developed, so they shouldn't be able to get tattoos. But if we already let 18-year-olds um, get tattoos, even though their brains are fully developed, um, it would make sense that 
we can move it down to 16 because it's, uh, their brains are fully developed too. Um, and also they stated that our example about um, teens going into Idaho and getting tattoos, they stated that that's not credible, but it is because if our teens in Washington here can still get tattoos under age, then um, it, it would make sense that the law could be lowered because it would really make no difference. Um, they also say that um, our teens have a lack of experience in the world, but they would have to get their parents' consent first, and they have experience, so they would know what the right decision is. Thank you. Our opponents have stated that a man in uh, a man interviewed who had a tattoo said that tattoos are good. This source is biased. This man has a tattoo. He think he should he thinks tattoos are good. Why why would we listen to a man who who is obviously in favor of this proposal? Additionally, uh, my opponents su suggested that. Uh, uh, certain religions or cultures can't uh, want to express themselves via tattoos. They also said that they can express themselves in other ways. That is true. Why do, can't they express themselves via religion, via holidays, via ethnic clothing? What what would happen if a teen got a tattoo that was considered inappropriate by their school? What would happen? Think about that. Would would they be allowed to go to school? We want our we want our future to be educated. If a teen gets a tattoo and cannot go to school, they're not getting educated. This is not helpful for our future. Uh, additionally, my opponents generalized that parents will allow teens to drive. T par not all parents think that driving is, a sa is safe. Not all parents think that driving, that teens should drive. This is the same way with tattoos. Additionally, my opponent said that, tat uh, that the brains of 16-year-olds are developed. That's not true. The brain, like I stated earlier, the brains of teenagers are not developed until age 25. Thank you. My worthy opponent stated that if teens have tattoos, they are less likely to get jobs. But teens are smart enough to get tattoos in a place that can be covered up by clothing. Also, they said that they aren't mature enough. But USA Today interviewed Petra Zahar Jarar, who is at college at 16. And if she is already at college, she definitely has the mindset and capability to get a reasonable tattoo. Thank you. 